Hey 8th graders, welcome to chapter 3, lesson 1. We're going to be talking about constant rate of change in this lesson. Our objective is to identify proportional and non-proportional relationships by finding a constant rate of change. So we need to understand what a constant rate of change is. So we have two vocab words that we're going to look at in the next slide. Make sure you copy those down. We're going to talk about what linear relationships are and how to determine if we have a constant rate of change in this lesson. So make sure you pay attention because this is going to help us when it comes to graphing linear expressions in this chapter. For our vocab today, we have two vocab words. We have linear relationship and constant rate of change. A linear relationship is when we graph a pair of coordinates, we're actually going to make a straight line when we connect the dots. So if we take information given to us on the table, and when you plot all the points and they fall in the straight line, that's a linear relationship. So something that makes a straight line either going up, which is positive, or going down, which is negative, is a linear relationship when you connect the dots. Constant rate of change is when we find the rate of change. Now hopefully we remember rate of change from seventh grade. Rate of change is when we find the change in the y values divided by when we find the change in the x values. Now if we have a constant rate of change, um, that means if we have a constant rate of change between any two points and it's always the same, it's constant. So when we find the change in y and we find the change in x and we take the y and we divide it by x and we always get the same number, that's a constant rate of change. And if we have a constant rate of change, it's going to make a straight line when graphed. So we're actually going to get a linear relationship if we have a constant rate of change. But if we don't have a constant rate of change, it's not going to make a straight line when graphed, and it's not a linear relationship. There's two more pieces that we're going to talk about, proportional and non-proportional relationships when it comes to making lines, and we'll talk about that when we actually get into the lesson. So let's get going. In our first example, we're going to determine by looking at a table if a bank account balance based on the number of transactions and how much money is in the bank um, is linear or nonlinear. So based on a table, we can determine without even graphing if we're going to make a straight line. First thing we're going to do is determine if it's linear. If it's linear, it has to have a constant rate of change as we found out in our vocab. So constant rate of change is what we're going to look for. So we're going to find the rate of change. And if it's linear, it has to be constant. The word constant in mathematics means it always has to be the same. So we're looking for the same rate of change every time. Now, if it's not linear, we need to explain why it's not linear. So those are the two things that we're going to be doing in this question. Determine if it's linear and explain why or why not. So if you're ever given a table, the first thing you want to do is you want to determine which one is the x and which one's the y. Typically, what you see first is the x value and what you see second is the y value. Now, if it deals with time, Time is always an x value, and quantity is usually a y value if it's talking about a big number. Usually a y value, not always. So what we need to do first is we're going to find rate of change. And rate of change is the change in y divided by change in x. And if we get the same rate of change every time, that's a straight line if we were to graph it. If it's not the same rate every time, then it's not a straight line when we graph it. So the first thing we do is we say, how do I go from 70, 170 to 140? We would take away 30. So we're subtracting 30. How would I go from 140 to 110? We take away 30 again. And then to go from 110 to 80, that's take away 30. So right now, our change in Y is it's going down by 30. So, so far, our bank account is going down by 30. Now, we're going to look at the x and see what it changes by. It went from 3 to 6, so that's going up by 3. 6 to 9, that's going up by 3. And 9 to 12, that's going up by 3. So right now, looking at this, I see that this is going down 30 every time, and this is going up by 3 every time. So my rate of change in this problem is a negative 30 over 3. And I'm going to go ahead and divide that. A negative 30 divided by 3 is actually a negative 10. And if I want to make that a fraction, I need to put that over 1. 
So what this means is my bank account balance, well, I'm looking at the balance. The bank account balance is going down by $10 every one transaction. So I know that this bank account balance is going down $10 every transaction. So now we have to determine, is it linear? And in this case, it's linear because it was always the same rate of change. Since we always had a negative 30 divided by 3, negative 30 divided by 3, negative 30 divided by 3. Since we're always ending up with the same change in y divided by the same change in x, and they're always going to equal negative 10, that's a linear expression. So if we were to graph this, this would make a straight line. So we're going to say, yes, it's linear. And the reason why it's linear is we're going to say has a constant rate of change. So as long as something has a constant rate of change, it's going to make a straight line when we graph it. That's it for example one. Let's go on to example two and do another table and determine if it's linear. In our next example, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our question. It says the amount of babysitter charges is shown. Is it linear? So we have to determine just based on looking at a table, if we were to graph this, would it make a straight line? If it is, determine the rate of change. Explain why or why not. So I challenge you to kind of think about what we did with the last question and see if you can determine if this makes a straight line, yes or no. And if it does, why does it or why does it not? So go ahead and try this problem on your own. Now I'm going to go ahead and go through this. So the first thing we do is we're going to find the change in y and the change in x. So we're going to look for a rate of change. So I'm always going to say that rate of change. So the first thing we're going to do, look for a rate of change. And we always want to tell what the rate of change is anyways. Even if it's not linear, tell if you can find the rate of change. Now, since this deals with time, that's my x value. And typically, if we see it first, it's usually the x anyways. And since this deals with the quantity of money, that's my y value. So rate of change, is, again, is the change in y first divided by the change and x. So I have to find the change in y and I have to find the change in x. So I'm looking at the y side first. It goes from 10 to 18, that's plus 8. 18 to 26, that's plus 8. And 26 to 34, that's plus 8. So looking at this right now, I'm going to say that this might have a constant rate of change. And if it has a constant rate of change, we don't just look at the y side, we also got to look at the x side. So, to go from 1 to 2, that's plus 1. 2 to 3, that's plus 1. And 3 to 4, that's also plus 1. So, this problem has a rate of change of 8 over 1. The y divided by x. And it's always an 8 over 1, so I only have to write this once. Well, that means that they're charging $8 for one hour. So this person charges $8 for one hour. So this means that it's linear because it's always $8 every hour. So yes, it's linear. And the reason why it's linear, you can say has a constant rate of change. So as long as it has a constant rate of change, it'll make a straight line when we graph it. That's it for this example. Let's go on and look at some graphs. All right, so in this example, which is a graph, we're looking at the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So if we had zero degrees Celsius, that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If we have five degrees Celsius, that's 41 degrees Fahrenheit. 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. As we can see, when we graph those points, they do fall in a straight line. So it is a linear relationship. And since it's linear, 
that means we have a constant rate of change. So we know that this is graphed and it's going to make a constant rate of change. Our job now is to determine if it's proportional. Now, if it's proportional, it has to do two things. In order to be proportional, the first thing it has to do is it has to make a straight line. So first, it has to be a line. We have a line. So far, it's proportional. The second thing it has to do is it has to go through 0, 0. So we need to determine, does this graph go through 0, 0? And just so you know, 0 is down here. Is it going to go through 0, 0? 0 is right there. And this graph doesn't go through zeros. There's no dot right here, and then the line goes up. This graph starts up here, not going through 0, 0, but it goes through 0, 32. So since this graph does not go through 0, 0, which is the origin, it's not proportional. But it does have a constant rate of change. And the reason why I know it has a constant rate of change is it makes a straight line. So what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to find the rate of change on something graphed. In order to find the rate of change on something graphed, the first thing you need is two points. So if you don't have it, you need to plot two points where you can get exact coordinates. We need at least two points that we can get exact coordinates. We got lucky here. And that's because all of these points are labeled. So we need to know that what they're labeled. Now, you need to know something about points. The first number is the x number, and the second number is the y number. And that's important that you know that, because now we're going to find the rate of change between these points. Now, to find the rate of change, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out what the y changed by. So the change in the y number. Now remind ourselves that the y is the second number. So we're going to go from this y to that y. We're going from 32 to 41. So if we go from 32 to 41, we're going to add 9. If we go from 0 to 5, that's our change in x. 0 to 5, that's our change in x. So we're going to put 5 down below. Let's make sure it's the same, because we said this is linear. And if it's linear, it's always going to do the same thing. 41 plus 9 is 50, so plus 9 still works. 5 plus 5 is 10, so 5 still works. 50 plus 9 plus 9. 10 plus 5 plus 5. 59 plus 9, still good. 15 plus 5, that's good. So we know that our change in y divided by change in x is 9 over 5. Now, I'm going to put labels on these. We know 9 what? Well, it's 9 degrees Fahrenheit because y is degree Fahrenheit. So 9 degrees Fahrenheit for every 5 degrees Celsius. So if you want to know how to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, for every 9 degrees Fahrenheit you move up, you're going to move 5 degrees Celsius up. So this is our rate of change, 9 over 5. Now, another way you could have found rate of change is you say, how much do I go up? That's my rise. How much do I go over? That's my run. And it's just change in y over change in x, which is also named rise over run. So we go up 9, we go over 5, and 9 over 5 is our answer. That's it for this lesson. I hope you guys like this video. Um, we're going to cover some more in class and practice these things, finding rate of change. Reminder, proportional relationships do two things. Go through the origin, make a straight line. And a constant rate of change will always make a straight line if you graph it. If you don't have a constant rate of change, it won't make a straight line. I will see you tomorrow, and you guys have a great day.